This video is long overdue. Probably about three months ago, I asked you guys about uh, a computer that was about this big and ran about $30, and I gave you some other specs on it. And um, I meant to come back and do a follow up video. A lot of you commented, some of you were right. And let me ask you this Do you think this is a Linux computer? Well, it's not. This is just an SD card. But would you believe that there are SD cards that run Linux? It's true. I learned this at the conference, uh, the Foscon conference up in Orlando back in November. Um, and it was one of the best talks I saw there. They were talking about, you may have seen SD cards you could put in cameras and other devices and turn them into Wi-Fi, um, uh, either Wi-Fi access points or allow them to connect to an access point so you can retrieve your photos or send your photos from the camera to someplace else. Well, the truth is, those SD cards actually have a processor. Uh, it was either a 200 or a 300 megahertz processor, and I think they said 32 gigs of RAM and, uh, and a flash chip on there for the operating system. And then the rest was the flash drive, which was um, uh, 8, 16, or 32 gigs in size. And people found out that they were running Linux, actually running Linux. It was a, like again, I can't remember if it was two or 300 megahertz, but equivalent to like my computer that I had in 1995, my desktop, and 32 megs of RAM on an SD card. You know, and it runs on the three volts, 3.3 volts of electricity that a USB port puts out. So how do you access this? So basically it's Linux on an ARM processor running uh, a web server, and that's how you can access your files off of this. Can you do anything more with it? The answer is yes. Uh, they have found different ways, but the easiest way was certain brands of cards. You could actually put a text file on the, the memory of the card, as if you were to put a file on any SD card, and name it, name it something, and I have to, again, I, I don't have this information from me. I'm trying to remember stuff from three, four months ago. Um, I think you call it like auto run. Uh, you know, or auto run config or something like that. And you can add a line of code in there and it basically runs it kind of like a shell script when the computer is powered up. And at that point, you can use that to start up uh, a Telnet client and you can log in as root. And at that point, you have uh, yourself an ARM Linux machine uh, with a copy of BusyBox on it so you can do pretty much anything. And, uh, and it's got a Wi-Fi chip built in and plenty of storage. So the reason it took me so long to do a video on this was because uh, even though I don't need one of these and I don't know how useful it would be to me because there's no other inputs other than the, the network traffic. So you could use it as a file server. You could use this as a file server up to 32 gigs if you got one that size. Uh, but there's no keyboard input or mouse input. You can tell that in. You could obviously throw drop bear on there. And in fact, since you have you up to 32 gigs, you could theoretically uh, load you know, Debian or Ubuntu or some sort of full desktop distro on there and have all the tools uh, on it. So something that would have been fun, and I was hoping to get it for Christmas. I put it on my Amazon wish list. I did not get it, and I kind of forgot about it. And that's why I never did a follow-up video, because I was hoping to do a follow-up video of actually using one. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they range in price, I think, from 30 to $60 last I checked, depending on what size card you get. And uh, it was funny, while the guy was there giving the presentation, I'm thinking, okay, so I could throw Debian on there, on the larger uh, flash RAM on it, on the, on the SD storage, and, uh, and I can churn root into Debian. And uh, I was even thinking I could even get like XFord going and run something out. And he mentioned someone that he was talking to online who did just that. They installed, I think, Ubuntu ARM on it, SSH in, did SSH forwarding to their desktop, installed Firefox, started up Firefox, and then complained about how slow it was. Um, which is funny because it's exactly the sort of thing I was thinking about doing just for fun. But if you need a quick and simple file storage, uh, network in your own cloud, you know, um, there are cheaper options. You can get yourself a pogo plug or something like that. Um, but for something to eat, it would just be neat to have. And of course, you can start any services on here. Uh, Telnet client, FTP server, 
uh, SSH client. It already has a web server running on it, so you can run websites off it theoretically. Obviously, it's not the best option for doing all those things, but it's just amazing that you could have a computer this size that is basically the equivalent of the computer I bought when I was 15, it was the first computer I bought with my own money, which was a big desktop computer that cost me over $2,000. And yeah, it doesn't have a video card, didn't, it doesn't have a DVD drive, which my computer did back then. Um, and I want to say I paid extra and got 64 megabytes of RAM, where this is only 32, but 32 was pretty standard back then. Uh, but it's fairly equivalent to something that size. It's how much we've, far we've come in, in 20 years, uh, which is kind of a long time, but but not at the same time to think we went from something that was $2,000 that was this big to something this small that you can get for under 50 bucks. Uh, and probably I, probably about the same, I think, I think my hard drive might have only been 20 gigs at the time, so actually more storage on one of these. And Wi-Fi built in, which I did not have in that computer back then. Uh, and, and I guess when you buy these cards, they come with a little uh, SD card uh, reader and it's important to use the SD card reader that came with it if you're going to do this because otherwise it's mounting the drive in two different ways, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'll try to remember the guy's information if I can and maybe put it in the description of the video if I can remember on, on how to do some of the stuff. Again, I wish I had one to actually do a demonstration. Some of you guessed that this is what I was talking about. Some of you were way off because you were talking about Raspberry Pis and other things that were much bigger or things that much, were much more expensive. Um, but probably much more useful. Again, great idea. I'm sure some smart people could think of some fun things to do. Like, again, by default, it's a, an access point. So theoretically, you could have something this size show up as an access point, and when people connect to it, have a captive por portal that they go to that looks like a login page for something else, and they could steal credentials, all in something this big. I mean, that's a malicious uh, thing you could do with it. Um, but the thought that you can do something with this like that is just amazing. So anyway, uh, yeah, so I just thought I'd talk about that because a few people have commented that I uh, never did a follow-up video. Uh, but the answer was it was an SD Wi-Fi card. They come in different brands. I think the brand the guy was using at the, uh, at the presentation was a, uh, uh, was a Transcend. And, uh, and that particular brand, if that's what it was, was one of the ones. And again, I'll try to put links in the description uh, uh, to the website that explains all about these types of cards or the real types of cards. So anyway, that's what I was talking about. And again, just amazing. It amazes me. Blew my mind. You know, anyway. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, think about becoming a supporter over at Patreon.com. Uh, that's Patreon.com forward slash x 1000 Also check out my website, FilmsByChris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link in the description. And if you like this, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.